Hi, this is James Gardner, the CineTech Geek. And as you can see behind me today, we're looking at data and specifically researching specific aspects of digital cinema. Now that we are digital, we can actually start data mining uh, aspects of the, the content that we use when projecting to the cinema screen. So in this case, we want to have a look at um, well, what started this little project off of mine was the fact that things like um, loudness levels, etc., and how we've been um, affected by the fact that we've gone digital. You can control your, your volume in your cinema much easier now due to digital automation. And there has been a lot of changing and you know, fiddling of knobs in terms of the loudness since we've gone to digital. Back in the previous days, everything was at level seven and a lot of the sound processes were stuck at that level and you couldn't really change them now we're in digital this seems to have changed a lot so we wanted one of the things we wanted to do was have a look at the way that we created the dcps in terms of loudness over the years to see if there's any trends in there which would help us understand what may have been happening but at the same time we've, this has allowed me to do a lot of a lot of analysis on other aspects of the cpls going through the system as well but anyway let's have a look at what i've created here um, let's jump to the application so as you can see here as part of the dcd.net portal um, there is a, a research tab down here that you'll only see if you've been given permission to to see it so if you do apply for an account please specify you want to see the research um, and in here you'll see that there's uh, a basically a table of all the cpls currently being through the system as the cpls come through and deleted we still keep basically the, the data about what the cpls and all the data about those cpls so um, there's that many things that have been through the system but um, I've deleted half, probably half of them over the time, over the time. So they're not all there, uh, but the data about those CPLs is. Um, and if you want to add your CPL to that, I'll go through the, at the end. I'll go through how to upload, uh, get an account and upload content if you want, so you can actually add your data to the system if you'd like. But in this case, we've got um, a list of the CPLs here. You've got them here. Now you can quickly just type search terms, for for example, here and get the result of that search term but realistically what you're more likely to do is you, you're going to the filter sections and you'll make specific filters and build them up to filter down exactly the sort of um, data that you want to get for example adverts only anything created by deluxe anything created by jaw anything that's a feature anything that's a trailer so if i activate that filter you can see that the number of items returned is less and basically here we have uh, content kind equals trailer LEQM is greater than 10, just to make sure anything that with, an, with a zero value, which probably means it didn't have any audio with it anyway, uh, is filtered out. Now, how it works is, is that you can, obviously, you can make a new filter, you can give it a name when you make it, and then over here you can basically add a new characteristic, and then you say, I want to edit, you know, these are all the characteristics of the CPL that you can edit. And uh, so if I say UUID, and I say uh, must contain, FF and the UUID update. So if I then apply that, um, there's a f you know quite a few fewer items to appear. So if I then I delete that, and then I, I unactivate it and re reactivate it, it'll go back to a higher number. Now, once you've created your filters that you want to analyze the data from, like you know anything about the content that you can from from those drop downs. You know the creator or issuer or any 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 element in the in the cpl um you can actually quickly turn them off by clicking these buttons up here but once you've got these you, you can actually click on the particular cpl and it'll actually give you more detailed information about that cpl it'll it will map out its structure up here and give you a lot of the, the the data about the cpl here but also if you really want you can actually show the raw if you're making a filter to get the real detail in terms of what sort of um, items you can search because these fields match up with the, the fields that you could search up in the filter and you can have a more detailed analysis of exactly how you can build your filters. Um, but once you've built and created the, the list of CPLs that you want to analyze, um, then you can start applying the, the, uh, all the different tables uh, or, or graphs that you want to have a look at based on the data that you've, you've created. So, um, so as you can see, you've got LEQM, LEQ um, 
no waiting over time, less over time, etc. All these, if you go through it, um, you can see all the different types of graphs you can generate based on what's been captured from the CPLs. As you could imagine though, um, encrypted CPLs, um, uh, the data is not there for, for things like the bit rate or the, the, the audio, L, uh, LEQM, etc. because you can't analyze it because it's encrypted. So um, hopefully, you know, like if, if, if some company you'd want to work with me on uh, applying this to their own data, adding the ability for it to decode uh, DCP may be something that you may want to do, but obviously that would be putting the system in a secure environment because you would be dealing with sensitive data. Um, but so, um, but strangely enough, quite a few CPLs do come through or DCPs for theatrical exhibition do come through that aren't encrypted. Um, so just an example of that, if we do actually say we want to see feature only, there's quite a few features that have come through um, to my cinemas which have not been encrypted over the years. Um, and so we can then have a look at um, the sort of um, LEQM levels. So each dot, as you can, you can scroll over a dot and you can actually zoom into certain sections if you want um, to have a look at what's going on. Uh, this line here is a rolling average. Uh, I think it's about 20 over 20 dots. Um, so it gives you a sort of a, a rolling average of what's going on based of, on all the dots. And as you can see here, you can sometimes find some anom anomalies. Obviously this Go film, which is a local film, um, was a little bit uh, loud for some reason, which is something I probably would, should look at at some stage. Um, but you can do lots of many other things. Um, for example, have a look at the LUFs over time. Um, duration of the films, uh, average duration of the films, you know, to see if the average uh, duration in seconds is is getting longer or shorter so that's quite interesting um, CPL types for example you know it was transitioning from uh, interrupt to simpty so over the years you can see how many uh, of, of that's occurring and you can st still go through them like how many reels does each of the films use um, so number of reels the film is made up of so that's quite interesting um, if we can have a look at that uh, number of reels categories you can see you know the percentage of the reels uh, of the certain sort of number of reels etc and you've got many other categories here that you can look at um you know just list this through them if you want i'll just scroll through the rest of them so you can have a look um for example 24 25 48 100 those, those are the number of system files that have been through with that that, you know that many frames which are feature based etc so you can do a lot of analysis of the content you know once you put a lot of content in there you can actually f look at looking at trends or um, um, other anomalies may shop, pop up um, but specifically I've tried to put this together to see if the way we create content has changed over the years currently I haven't seen anything specifically pop out but um, we're going to having a larger look at it uh, over the next few months and have some friends help me look at that to see if we can see anything that's of interest and potentially write some stories for some some online rags to to look into what's going on there but yes that's uh, a real good little tool to do some research in terms of the creation and and how the creation of cpls have, has uh, evolved over the years now um quickly though i'm going to quickly if you did want to use this tool and upload your content into the system i'll quickly go through how that would happen obviously you'd want to go to um, the portal Lisa IP address and apply for an account. And once you do apply for an account, say what you want to do, I'll give you access to the correct areas along the site here. So you'd be a content producer and you want to ingest content. And you go to here and uh, you'll see um, the things that you've uploaded. So in, if you're ingesting content, if you go to help, it tells you exactly how to do it. It's got all the instructions here. Um, I'll quickly go through it. Now I'll actually bring up what I tend to use. Okay, so FileZilla. Um, typically, if you are going to use FileZilla, um, you want to actually go into here, click this button, and you want to create uh, a login, right? So um, in this case, you want to use F F SFTP or secure FTP. So everything's very secure on the system. Everything's encrypted. If it's leaving or coming in, everything is encrypted. Encryption, encryption, encryption. Because sometimes we do deal with unencrypted DCPs. Uh, there's a lot of uh, um, 
effort put in put into making sure that everything is as secure as and as encrypted and you know security is very high uh, and as such we do require security FTP so if you want to do uh, SFTP you really need to set, get into something like FileZilla and specifically set up this configuration as a SFTP the, the host the the port as you will see is is, mis, is mentioned uh, in here so this is the the transfer protocol it must be F FTP server the port is specific it's not a common port um, it creates you a special username for logging in and it actually creates a special password um, which I'll hide before I send it but you can just push this button to regenerate it regenerates a very unique password every time and once you have um, done that so we'll just go back to FileZilla again and as you can see here I've logged in to um, my server and you go to the upload directory and you'll actually see a few files I've uploaded recently I'm going to ingest but I actually got a DCP today on a on a um, USB stick from uh, a local distributor or local agent here in here so I'm going to I'm clicking on it here and I'm just going to basically say upload and that will um, upload the DCP into the upload directory of my ser of the DCNY server or the, the backend server which does the, the storage and um, once that's there um, you do um, wait for that upload to finish we'll just give that a few minutes but while we're waiting we'll, we'll go over here and we'll go into the ingest section as you can see here it actually has detected all the files which are already ingested into that directory and when it does detect a, uh, a file in that directory it will automatically check it and verify that it is good to up, uh, ingest it won't ingest anything that's corrupt or or doesn't pass a the crc check or a verification check that the a dcp can uh, that it contains um, as you can see here so and then once you click on it it'll actually give you a brief indication of what this of what that um, dcp is and you can in, in this case you'd want to ingest it um, in this case I'd, I'd attach it I can attach it to a film or a distributor or have no attachment at all um, I'll just cancel that for now because I don't really know what that is so if we go to this one BOSCH and I find the film and I ingest you can get permissions on how it can be seen on the system if you're using this for distribution and we just ingest it and we've got a few more here and we'll just say it's a, it's got the same selection so we'll just hit all that again we'll put these into the queue there's a few more now you might not have a film that is associated with an actual f uh, a DCP that's not associated with an actual film doesn't matter just and just it uh, as uh, unassociated it'll just appear only in your f for you um, because it, uh, otherwise if we just, this is using it for other people looking at content they can only see content that's associated you know there's a complicated database system to only show content that people are allowed to show sort of solution that's why that, that's all in here um, anyway I'll just finish that one and actually you'll see at the bottom here because I've ingested content the system is starting to munch on it so it's chewing it's, it's basically um, pulling the audio out pulling the video out um, doing um, generating um, all the, um, the 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 loudness checking and the LEQM checks and all that sort of stuff coming up with values and, and associating with that, that that DCP or the CPLs in that DCP and then once that's all done you know for example once you have got a lot of content in there if you go to assets and you look at a particular asset um, you actually get uh, again the structure a few images from it um, you can actually have a look at the the uh, the video bitrate of it um, the waveform and you can actually play it and see the waveforms here to analyze it to make sure it's all good um, there's the loudness levels so you've got your LEQM chart here and this is a LKFS chart here you can have a look you've got them all down here obviously um, and um, if you I use this to distribute to a few different people so you can assign a distribution task etc right so um, but once you've got it all in here it's been ingested um, that CPL will appear in the CPL system and it will be added to the research uh, 
a statistic. So it will then be part of the um, CPLs which are um, analyzed in the research tab. So that's how you'd put a lot of content in there. Now, um, obviously this is, uh, I've, this is system's been around for a while and a few people have logged in and used it to analyze their own DCPs. Uh, they may want to have a look at it now in, t in terms of the context with uh, the research tab if they want to. So that's another little um, tool that they can look at. Um, but um, if you were going to put um, um, proprietary or, or encrypted stuff in there, well, um, obviously um, that's not really what this is for, but you know, potentially if some larger organization wanted me to jet build the system in an internal solution, uh, that's potential possible, but that's, you know, if they want to do that, because um, unfortunately, um, we can't really have a look at all the encrypted content and what that's doing because it's encrypted and we can't generate a lot of the metadata to tell us what's actually happening with the encrypted content. But um, we can do it on the trailers and unencrypted DC um, features coming through the system uh, uh, over the years. And there is some information that's available in the encrypted content in terms of um, um, if it's 3D, non-SMPTE, um, 3D or not, etc. as you can see when we were looking through the research area. So whatever, data is exposed in the CPL, which uh, even you know, even if it's encrypted, that still can be looked at in, in what we're doing with an encrypted DCP. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I hope people um, find this useful. Uh, it is interesting to try and look at this data and, and visualize it in a way which can help us um, visualize if certain things are, you know, if we see a trend in the way content is created, loudness levels are being utilized or anything like that, that would be very useful. So hopefully this tool can be used to, to do that in the future. Anyway, that's James Gardner with my contribution for the last six months. It's taken a while to write all this code and I hope you enjoyed and bye for now.